There's something really special about whales, dolphins and porpoises. Watching them in the wild is probably the ultimate wildlife experience. Life can never quite be the same again. There's a sense of calm and joy just knowing they're out there. They include the largest animal on earth, the deepest living mammal, the mammal with the longest known migration, the species that are capable of emitting the loudest sounds in nature. They're still shrouded in mystery, but what we do know about them is astonishing. Interestingly, there's no real scientific basis splitting the cetaceans into the groups we know of as whales, dolphins and porpoises. Whale describes the larger of the animals, dolphin the medium sized and porpoise the smallest. This is really misleading because actually there's whales out there that are smaller than the larger dolphins and there's dolphins out there that are smaller than the larger porpoises. And to make it even more confusing, there's six members of the dolphin family, also known as delphinidae, that have the word whale in their name. And these six species are classified as black fish. Well, they're not all black and they're not fish. It's a bit confusing. Scientists prefer to split modern cetaceans into two distinct groups. The toothed whales, otherwise known as odontocetes, and the baleen whales, also known as mysticetites. Cetaceans fall into Kingdom, Animalia, Class, Mammalia, Order, Cetacea. Cetaceans make up about 14 families. The baleen whales include the right whales, the rorquals, the pygmy right whale and the grey whale. The toothed whales include oceanic dolphins, narwhal and beluga, the dwarf and pygmy sperm whales, the porpoises, the sperm whale, the beaked whales, the river dolphins, the beji, the South Asian river dolphin, and the La Plata dolphin. Cetaceans have a hairless streamlined body to reduce water turbulence. External projections are reduced to the essentials flippers for steering, a tail with two boneless horizontal flukes, and usually a dorsal fin for stability. Even the genitals are concealed with folds. Other adaptations to life underwater include a layer of blubber. This is a combination of fat and oil. This is beneath the skin and it conserves body heat. They also have light, spongy, oil-filled bones. Cetaceans have collapsible rib cages and flexible skeletons, which allows them to compensate for high water pressure when they dive. Their vision is reasonable underwater. They can see really well up until about one meter. In the air, they can see pretty well up until about two and a half meters. Their color vision is very limited. Some species can focus ahead, above and behind them, and some can move both eyes independently. Some of the river dolphins are nearly entirely blind. Cetaceans breathe through one or two blowholes which are located at the top of their head. Toothed whales have one, baleen whales have two. Even though they all breathe air, they're able to remain underwater for extended amounts of time. In order to remain underwater, their heart rate slows by half. Also, the water pressure squeezes the vessels near the skin now this then means the blood can nourish the vital organs. The water pressure also compresses the lungs, which force air into the trachea and nasal passages. Some of the air is then absorbed by foamy secretions along the respiratory tract wall. Cetaceans open their blowholes and explosively release air and a spray of oil droplets before they have to take another breath. They can also tolerate higher carbon dioxide in their blood, which allows them to stay underwater for longer, even up to one to two hours with the larger whales. Some cetaceans dive to great depths in search of prey. The sperm whale can dive up to 1,000 meters and stay underwater for 90 minutes. Whales and dolphins don't need to sleep the same way we do. They do go into a semi-sleep mode where one half of the brain switches off so they can only sleep or doze for short periods, but they can still go up to the surface to breathe. 
Whales have a poor sense of smell, but they have excellent hearing. They don't have external ears, but they have small ear openings just behind their eyes. They can also tell the direction of sound underwater. Some whales, including the rorquals, they breed during the winter. They migrate from their summer feeding grounds in the polar seas to tropical waters. The calves are born in warmer seas because they don't have much fat or blubber on them to keep them warm. They usually give birth around island groups or closer to shore and then once they've given birth they immediately get pregnant again and then in the spring they return to cold waters to feed. Other cetaceans breed seasonally but they don't migrate to do so. After the mother's given birth and sometimes other members of that pod they'll assist the newborn up to the surface so they can take their first breath. Young cetaceans are suckled on milk until they're old enough to eat solid food. Cetaceans reproduce sexually, which means it takes a male and a female to mate, and they do this belly to belly. Not much is known about their reproduction. In some species, it hasn't been observed at all. After mating, the female will generally be pregnant for about a year, after which she'll give birth to one calf. Cetaceans need to protect their young, so just having one means they can direct all of their energy and attention to that one individual. Toothed whales make up 90% of all cetaceans. Most are medium sized, but the sperm whale can grow up to about 18 meters. Most species are found in deep waters and coastal shallows, but some live in fresh water. As their name suggests, they possess teeth. The teeth of the toothed whale group are simple and conical and usually numerous. The jaws may be extended to form a beak as seen in dolphins, and they usually feed on individual prey. Most tooth whales live in pods, but they vary in size, from as less as 10, sometimes up to a thousand. There's much speculation about the structures in these groups, but it's thought that subgroups form to perform tasks such as feeding. This suggests a complex social structure. On the forehead, there's a fluid-filled swelling called the melon, and usually in front of this, there's a beak. Toothed whales use echolocation to determine the location of objects using reflected sound, so they can navigate and hunt as well as avoid obstacles and enemies. They can also identify family members. They use echolocation by bouncing high-pitched clicking sounds off underwater objects. The sounds are made by squeezing air through nasal passages near the blowhole. These sound waves then pass into the forehead where the melon focuses them into a beam. If the echolocating call hits something, the reflected sound is picked up through the animal's lower jaw and passed to its ears. They can use this method to work out an object's distance, direction, speed, density and size. By moving its head to aim the sound beam at different parts of a fish, a dolphin can also differentiate between species. The baling whale makes up about 15 species, and the most striking feature is their size. They range from 6.5 meters in the pygmy right whale to a whopping 33 meters in the blue whale. Instead of teeth, the baleen whale has 130 to 400 plates along the upper jaw. The inner edge of each plate has bristles to sieve food through water. These bristles are continuously worn away and then regenerated. Despite their massive size, they feed on the smallest creatures in the ocean. They feed on these creatures by taking in large quantities of them. As the mouth closes, the water presses against the rigid upper jaws and flows out over the baleen plates. This then leaves the prey behind. Baleen whales don't echolocate. They communicate with a variety of sounds from squeals to rumbles. They produce low frequency sounds and mostly well below 5000 hertz. The sounds may travel hundreds of kilometers underwater. Researchers speculate as to whether these sounds are used for long range, advertising for a mate, assembly, greeting. The research is ongoing. Although it's widely known that baleen whales don't echolocate, there are some studies that suggest that they do. Some studies have shown that the bowhead whale produce low frequency sounds that may give the whales information about the ocean floor and locations of ice. Cetaceans are ecosystem engineers. 
which means they modify habitats in a way that increases species richness and habitat productivity. This means they are important for maintaining the health and stability of the environment they're living in. Whales modify habitats by a mechanism called a whale pump. They feed at varying depths, but they generally defecate at the surface. These clouds of poop provide a boost of iron and nitrogen to many ecosystems directly benefiting the marine food chain and renewing the fish stocks. Whales protect our planet's health by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Their poop provides vital nutrients for phytoplankton to grow and absorb CO2. Also, when cetaceans die and sink to the ocean floor, they lock up more carbon from the atmosphere. Cetaceans also help to regulate the flow of food by helping to maintain a stable food chain this ensures that certain animal species don't overpopulate the ocean. When one species of animal that's important to the food chain dies, it then allows other species to thrive. And then when a species thrives, of course, it needs more food. This then depletes the populations of their food and so on and so on. They're also important indicators of the state of the marine environment. Threats to cetaceans also affect the entire ecosystem and since cetaceans are especially sensitive to them, they act as important indicators of health of the oceans. Whales have been hunted by humans throughout history for their meat, bones and blubber. In the 20th century, when the emergence of intensive hunting and new technology such as factory ships came into play, species numbers declined dramatically and still today, they face huge challenges. Over 1,500 whales and even more dolphins are killed in hunts every year and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight to this. Over 3,000 whales and dolphins are in captivity and used for entertainment. Water covers over 70% of the world's surface, yet only a tiny percentage is protected. And the threats of commercial fishing, plastics and pollution are combining to make the whole ocean unsafe and toxic. The full extent of the numbers of whales and dolphins dying in nets is unknown, as it's a hugely underreported problem. The most recent estimates suggest hundreds of thousands. Many organisations are fighting these threats and making good progress, but much more work needs to be done to make bigger changes. As waters steadily grow warmer, certain species may not be able to survive in the region. It's difficult to predict just how climate change will affect the species because they're part of a complicated ecosystem with many interlinked species. The temperature change may directly influence the distribution of whales and then you have ocean acidification, which can affect the food chain and habitats of their prey. Cetaceans are highly mobile creatures, so if climate change causes the prey to move, they will probably follow them. This is going to create more competition if different species are using the same area. What can you do to help cetaceans? You can donate to charities. There's plenty out there that need help. Use the links in the description. You can adopt a cetacean. Again, there's plenty of organizations out there that provide this. You could fundraise. This is a great way of getting communities to engage. Don't buy tickets to whales, dolphins or porpoises in marine parks. Support alternatives to captivity, such as whale and dolphin watching tours. Although, check the company out first because some are way too intrusive on them. Reconsider your diet. Fishing is in high demand because humans are eating it at extortionate rates. Take responsibility for your waste. Minimise plastic and other waste as much as you possibly can. Help to clear local beaches of rubbish. There's always local groups around. Spread the word and educate people when it comes to cetaceans and the challenges they face today. What have you learnt? We've looked at cetacean families, anatomy, reproduction, their role in the environment, threats and what you can do to help them. 
Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have enjoyed it, please do subscribe and hit that bell if you want to receive regular content from us. Also, if you've got any questions or you want to contribute to anything you've seen today, please do comment. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, see ya.